Hello everyone, it's me again. I have tried to film this video like a million times this past week and it just has not gone well at all. So it is Friday, April 23rd. It is Mortal Kombat Day, Shadow and Bone Day, Falcon and Winter Soldier series finale day, and uh, yeah, I just, I am committed to filming an update. I left work early today because I just wanted to. I've just had a really rough week, like physically, mentally, you know, and I was like, you know what, I have sick time, I'm not feeling good, you know, mental health is as important as physical health, so I'm going to leave a couple hours early. So I did, came home, ate some cheese and crackers because I'm a child, and <laughs> I'm here to film an update. So yeah, I just wanted to kind of talk about like where I've been, why I've been feeling the way I'm feeling, and update y'all on my writing progress because it is Camp Nano and I have been writing every day and I've been like busting my ass writing every day so I definitely want to tell you about all of that. But I'm going to do something a little different. I am going to record some audio and place it over some b-roll so you're not just looking at my dumb freaking face the whole time. So yeah, roll that b-roll. So I've been dealing with some real mental health shit and it feels really silly when I explain the main reason why, but when I got COVID back in December, I lost my taste and my smell and it recovered within a few weeks and everything seemed fine. Um, it did feel a little bit weaker, but I was willing to accept that because you know, it was way better than not having it at all. Well, about a month ago, my smell and taste shifted completely and it's it's just really hard to explain, but it's like um, whenever I eat something, there is a 50-50 chance that it's going to taste and smell like rotting garbage or it's going to taste and smell normal. And it's there's no like rhyme or reason. It's it's always, you know, like if it was all cheeses, I would understand, but at this point it seems to only be cheddar cheese that smells and tastes disgusting. Or if it was like all chocolate, I would understand, but Cadbury chocolate tastes fine and Hershey's tastes weird, so it's it's weird. And I know they had their own tastes before, but I mean, it's it's really a noticeable, disgusting difference at this point. And they all take on the same taste and smell and like I said it's like rotting garbage and it's really really hard to explain and it's also really depressing because it seems to affect my favorite foods and drinks mostly because I have not had coffee for a month at this point actually longer than a month um my mom bought me an espresso machine for my birthday I got it a little early and I literally had maybe three cups before I realized that it was tasting bad, not because of the water I was using or because I didn't like that particular, you know, uh, pod of Nespresso, but because this weird taste distortion. And I'm gonna be real with you, I have literally cried over coffee these past, like, few weeks. And I think the fact that it's lasted so long is what's making me so depressed about it. And at this point, you would think I'd get used to it and would be fine and just learn to live with it, but it's just, it's so strange because I can eat something one week and then the next week it's disgusting, and anytime after that it remains disgusting, and I'm just getting really, really tired of it. Um, dinner is not fun anymore, I don't cook because why waste time cooking when it's probably gonna taste like shit anyway, and it's just been really affecting me mentally and emotionally, and it's hard. On top of that, I hate my job, I'm doubting myself as a writer, I feel like a crappy friend because I'm never around, and those are all just the, the main things that are contributing to this depressed state that I'm in. You know, just the normal, usual crap on top of the taste thing. So that's where I've been and how I've been, but what have I been doing? So Project Elfblood, The Lost Lady, book one in my Hearts of Astraea fantasy series, was a complete and total failure. I wrote about 11,000 words and I hated it. It wasn't fun, it wasn't enjoyable in any way, and I just gave up on it. I jumped right into another story featuring characters I'd created a little while ago, named Ben and Liv, 
and I just kind of ran with the barest hint of an idea, which is something I never do. If you are, you know, have been on my channel for a little while, you know that I am an extensive planner and outliner, and this pantsing thing has been very scary and very strange to me. And now I have this weird habit with, excuse me, with like Camp Nano, regular Nano. If I plan to write a single project during that month, I only want my words to count towards that single project. So when I gave up on Elf Blood, I wanted to disregard those words that I'd written and focus only on my new idea. My goal was to write 30,000 words of a new story, not multiple stories. So I'm now at the point I just want to count what I'm writing for my Dampier story. But because of that, uh, I was really behind because I had written about 11,000 words in Elf Blood, and I gave that up and started completely new, you know, at zero for my Dampier story. And so for a few weeks now, I've been about five to six thousand words behind every day, and every time it seemed like I was starting to catch up, I would fall behind again. But today, I'm finally up to where I want to be. So yeah, uh, I'm sitting at 23,034 words in my Dampier story, which is untitled at this point, and with my goal being 30,000 words in 30 days, and it being the 23rd of April, I'm like right there where I need to be, and I'm happy with that. And I should have been happy with it before because, like I said, I have 11,000 words of my failed elf blood story, and even though I hate it and I'm not going to do anything with it, those are still 11,000 like new words that I wrote this month. So I will count them at the end of the month, just maybe not officially with the rest of my Dampier words. I still have absolutely no idea where I am going with this story, <laughs> so that's fun. It is, it is what it is. It's fun and I'm just going. If you're curious about the story, I did talk a little bit about it in my last update video. It is, like I said, I'm just calling it my Dampier story. Sometimes I'll refer to it, like to myself, as Project Dampier, but it's just the Dampier story at this point. It's about this city kind of in the near to far future. I know that makes no sense, but I just haven't decided yet how far into the future it is. And the city is very probably <laughs> loosely based on like Boston. I've never been to Boston. I just have a weird fondness for the New England area. I think maybe reading too much Stephen King when I was younger or maybe in a past life I lived in Massachusetts or something. I don't know. <laughs> but yeah, so it's very loosely based on bits of Boston that I've read about and looked at pictures of, but it will probably be a city that I create entirely in my head. And in this story, vampires exist alongside humans, and there's no, like, wars. They're not, like, trying to hold dominion over the humans. They're basically just wealthy socialites, and vampires are separated into kind of clans, which are typically based on, like, who, you know, which vampire turned you, which clan has a head vampire, and most of the clan are vampires that come somehow from that vampire's bloodline, whether they were turned by the head vampire or they were turned by a vampire that was turned by the head vampire. It it makes sense in my head and I could probably explain it a lot better, but I'm stupid, so... So one of my main characters, her name is Ben, it's a nickname, <laughs> she is an emissary for this head vampire, Casimir. As an emissary, she's kind of this agent she can go on like diplomatic missions for him, she can hunt down rogue vampires for him, maybe like vampires who were previously in the clan but broke the law or something and then ran away. You know, she does grunt work for Casimir and she's been bonded to him through a magic ritual that involves drinking his blood which gives her powers that allow her to do these things and she's just really badass and cool. <laughs> and the story opens with Casimir revealing the other main character, her name is Liv. He has a trueborn daughter, which makes Liv a Dampier, only 
Dampier are kind of hunted in this universe, and so he's left her alone for her most of her life. Like, he has not bothered with her. She has no idea what she is or who he is. She's just living her, you know, what she believes to be her human life. But other people have found out that she's a Dampier and are threatening Casimir, so he sends Ben to essentially rescue her, I guess, and bring her to him and the clan where he can keep her safe. And that's where I'm at right now. <laughs> I just am writing the scene now where Liv and Casimir are having their very first conversation. It's a little awkward because I'm not sure where I'm going after this, so hopefully it doesn't fizzle after this because then I would have wasted all y'all's time and mine telling you about it. <laughs> so the story is going and I'm having fun with it and you know I know that's all that matters but I'm also having kind of a genre crisis at the moment. Um, I seem to have a genre crisis every couple of, couple of months but this one feels a little more serious. <laughs> so hold on, I gotta let Khaleesi in. <laughs> So yeah, as I was saying, before I was so rudely interrupted, uh, I'm having a genre crisis. I just, I don't feel the same love that I once did for young adult fiction, and it's really disheartening because I'm 32, I've been reading young adult since I was probably 9 or 10. I mean, I've been reading other things. I. <laughs> I was reading Maggie Shane romance novels when I was like 9 or 10 and I probably shouldn't have been, but it's just young adult fiction has been kind of a part of my identity, I guess, for a very long time. And now I'm just, I don't know, I don't feel a pull to it, I don't feel a passion for it. And when I started this Dampier story, um, I kind of started it with the intentions of it being like a new adult story. But now it actually almost feels adulty at the same time, just like a regular adult paranormal romance. And I'm just, I'm not sure, and I don't want to think too hard about it. I'm just going to write the story and figure all that crap out later. But it's just something kind of in the back of my head, this ever-present storm cloud that this part of my identity is gone. And I feel like I've essentially wasted my time and, you know, I branded myself as a young adult author and it feels like my Gargoyles trilogy is a waste of time now. I know it's not true that my Gargoyles trilogy was a waste. I learned a lot while I was writing it. I learned a lot about, you know, writing itself. I learned a lot about writing and finishing stories. I learned a lot about self-publishing. I learned a lot. It's not a waste, and I know that. And maybe this is just a phase, and young adult is still my passion, I just haven't... I don't know. Just can't feel it right now. But it just really sucks because, like I said, ever since 2018 I've been kind of promoting myself and talking, my, talking about myself and, you know, I'm a young adult author and, oh, do you like this genre? You might like me, you know? It's, it's just kind of difficult, I guess, to come to grips with the fact that I might have been wrong all this time, and what if adult romances just are my thing? What if, what if this Dampier story turns into like an erotic romance, and that is just my deal? Because uh, long ago, because like I said, I'm pretty old. Before self-publishing was even, I didn't even know you could do that, honestly. I was published with this e-publisher. I'm not gonna name names, um, but it was like erotic fiction, and I got published, um, I want to say two novellas and two short stories. Well, three novellas, one of them for a Christmas anthology, and then a short story for a Western anthology. And it was really cool, and it was erotic romance, so maybe that's my, maybe that's my thing, and maybe because I did have a love for young adult, I was trying to push myself into this young adult box, and maybe that's just not me. I don't know, I have a lot of reflection to do, um, <laughs> and it's just hard. And on top of everything else with my mental state, it's just been difficult for me to even think about filming and interacting with my friends, which sucks because they're my friends and I like them genuinely. I don't just like them because we write in the same genre, obviously, but I almost feel like 
I don't belong <laughs> and I know that's very stupid because if anything you know I feel like as writers we all have a certain sense of feeling like we've never fit in and so I don't know I feel like a fraud I feel like a loser I feel like a big old imposter and I don't know what I'm doing with my life and I don't know it just it sucks because at, I feel like at this age I should know what I want to do what I want to be and I don't know so yeah, I don't mean to get all depressive and stuff. Oh, who am I kidding? I opened the vlog like that. So I'm actually going to stop right now because I want to get this edited so I can get it up as soon as possible. And uh, my boyfriend is currently on a conference call for his job. But after that, we have Falcon and Winter Soldier and Mortal Kombat. I'm very excited for Mortal Kombat. Although I watched the, the first like six minutes or so on YouTube and I'm not that happy with the literal fridging that I see, but we'll, we'll see how it goes, you know? <laughs> but uh, yeah, and then I might check out Shadow and Bone. I have not finished the book. I just have not been finding time to read and my boyfriend probably won't like it. So it might be something I watch alone, but I might check that out. Um, so yeah, I'm going to end this vlog now. Um, I'm sorry I haven't been around. I'm trying to catch up with all y'all's vlogs. It's just been hard and sometimes I just don't know what to say. So I will always drop a like, but I do try to comment on at least one thing, you know. <laughs> this old used brain better be good for coming up with something. Yeah, I'm, I'm sorry and I'm gonna try to do better, but uh, hopefully all y'all's writing projects is going, is? are going as well as mine. Let me know in the comments down below and like and subscribe and all that fun stuff and I'll show you a final, final clip of Khaleesi. She looked away the minute I turned the camera on her. <laughs> that was the sweetest. No. So yeah, like, comment, and subscribe, all that fun stuff. She's rubbing on my arm. She is honestly bringing me so much joy these past few weeks. I love her so much. But yeah, so I will see you all in my next video. And thank you so much for watching. Mwah.